Now you've completed your analysis, and it's time to let others know what you have found and communicate with them about your findings. There are a number of routes you can disseminate your findings. You can make a presentation, either with a poster or a PowerPoint, in front of your friends or colleagues, but better yet, you can write a paper to publish in a relevant scientific journal. So it would be useful to understand how a scientific paper is structured when the time comes for you to write one, but it will be also useful when you need to read one once you know what to expect from each section of a scientific paper. So typically, um, a scientific paper is composed of these uh, seven separate sections, a title, abstract, introduction, methods, results, conclusion and discussion, and reference. So uh, in the uh, next slide, we will take a look at uh, each section in more detail one by one. So a title can help you or others um, to determine if an article is interesting one or relevant. In fact, uh, the title will be the first information you will see when you use bibliographic database to do a literature search. So the information included in the title will enable you to quickly determine if this paper will be relevant to your research or not. So um, using the PubMed, I cut and pasted a title from one of the most recent paper I found using the keywords ocular manifestations and COVID-19. So as shown here, the title of the paper is Ocular Manifestations of Hospitalized Patients with Confirmed 2019 Novel Coronavirus Disease. So one of the information you can find from a title typically contains the goal of the study. So from the title of this study, we can figure that the goal of the study seems to find out or describe uh, the um, ocular symptoms presented in the uh, COVID patients. So once you know the goal of the study, then you can also expect what their research hypothesis will be too. By the way, if this is your first time seeing such studies, it may grab your attention immediately as a vision science student because COVID-19 is mainly known to affect respiratory system. But there has been a growing and consistent report uh, that some of the COVID patients are presented with symptoms in their eyes, indicating there is a certain relationship between the disease and the eye, which is interesting findings in and of itself for vision scientists. And another information you can find from a title can be a type of samples used um, in the study where the sample of subjects was the COVID-19 patients. Sometimes a title indicates the type of research conducted. Even though it is not very clear from the title, it looks like the study is uh, mainly descriptive given the recency of the disease and it's probably kind of a case report type of design, which is one of the epidemiological research designs we will talk about later. And finally, we may be able to find about a brief indication of the results. In this study, we can sort of see that they may have found some symptoms in the patient's eye, but we do not know what kind of symptoms they are. So, in summary, the title provides a reasonably complete description of the conducted study, sometimes even foreshadows the findings. So, next, you will find an abstract after the title uh, in any scientific paper. Along with the title, um, abstract will be very important for your literature review because it is more or less a complete summary of the entire paper. 
So as we can see, the abstract is composed of the um, pretty much all the sections of a complete, uh, complete paper, except the size of each section is uh, just a miniature, uh, miniature of um, original sections. For example, the uh, purpose here uh, is basically a mini introduction. And then the participants and methods is basically the, uh, the small method section. And then you have results and conclusion sections uh, where we can find in the original paper too. So uh, most of the time, abstract of a paper is included in the um, bibliographic database for free, uh, whereas a full paper is not, right? So, um, you know, knowing that the abstract is available for free, um, sometimes you do not need to uh, find the full article or otherwise you have to just buy those uh, full paper. So for a literature review, you will read the title and abstract first to quickly filter out irrelevant studies to your research. However, when you write your own paper for your research, uh, this will be probably the last section of the paper to be written because you can write it only when you know everything about your research because abstract is pretty much a complete paper. In the introduction, you can find theoretical background information such as a brief history of previous research and their results from which the current study arises. So in this section, you should be able to identify the rationale of the research. So in other words, why the authors to do what they do. So which, which should be the same for you to write your own paper. You should make it clear why you do what you do in the introduction. You can also find a specific research question or hypothesis to be tested at the end of the introduction. In a real publication, your research hypothesis is essentially the same as the goal of the study. In the method section, you will find the detailed information about how authors perform their experiment or research, including the type of samples or subjects and how they were recruited. Also, you will be able to find the information about specific techniques, equipment, or apparatus used in the research, and the information about the experimental design and overall procedures can be found. Even though people um, don't pay a good attention reading this section, um, this section should include enough details about the experiment so that other researchers in the field can repeat the procedure when needed. The next results section is at the heart of a, heart of a scientific paper. It contains the data presented in the form of tables and lower figures. So in this section, uh, visualization, uh, visualization is, at, uh, is the key uh, to the presentation. Even though um, not very common, but more and more authors are asked to provide their raw data these days. So whenever and wherever they are available, um, make sure that you take time to analyze them on your own if you can and compare your own analysis with the author's analysis. Conclusion and discussion sections are sometimes presented separately or they're combined under either conclusion or discussion or both. So this section typically starts with a brief summary of the results section in a non-technical and more plain language. This is the section where you can find the author's interpretation of the results by relating them with other previous research. You can also find the implication of the research or suggestions of possible improvements or ideas for future research. While reading this section, try to understand what's presented in your own language and to take different perspectives from the author's viewpoint 
whenever, wherever you can. The key is to remain skeptical throughout reading this section. And at the end of the paper, uh, you will find a list of sources read by the authors and cited throughout the paper, meaning that only the read and cited sources can be included in the reference section. So the final list in this section is not the list of the entire collection of literature search. So what's not cited in the main body text? doesn't get included in the reference section. Therefore, their entry should match each other. And this is a formal way to show how serious we are about treating the intellectual property and to acknowledge uh, the intellectual ownership to the ideas that do not originate from us. Um, the style of reference is different from journal to journal, but GCU recommends Harvard style for students' projects and dissertations. And congratulations, you've just completed a cycle of conducting a research. In fact, you've just opened up an infinite loop of conducting research. Um, any good research should generate more questions or ideas for future research at the end of the cycle rather than closing the loop or hitting the dead end. And that's how science evolves and progresses. Next, uh, we will look at the uh, different types of data and how to categorize them properly according to their type before we analyze them.